Well, we finally got uh, the tool head clump off. And that's uh, be bloody tight. It's got a small eccentric on the end. It's not much of an offset. It doesn't need to be. Especially if you crank it round as hard as it was. The only way I've got it off is by using that half inch, a uh, three quarter inch drive, which is 18 inches long, and giving it a few persuasive whacks on the end. It was absolutely solid. And that little eccentric runs inside this. And that runs inside that groove there. So it sits like that. So you take the pressure off the eccentric, rotate the tool head around, and then lock it back up. Uh, the fit between this, these mating surfaces here, on the inside of that bore, well, let's just say it's took me 20 minutes with a little tap, 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 tap behind it to get it shifted. It was a bit of picking up, but they look pretty clean surfaces. You can just see a small amount of pickup. Probably the oil's dried out, I suspect. Not, you know, nothing damaged. There's a to use Diner Guy's expression, Mike, there's a few uh, battle wounds, that's the top of it. You see where its tool heads come back and clonked. Almost well, been rammed into work. Not too bad though. So we're there on that, thankfully. So I've bust three sockets, two spanners. Just trying to undo stuff that's been overly tightened and seized up. Well, the power's back on after two hours. I uh, thought I'd make a start on degreasing a lot of the internal stuff just for a change of uh, scenery kind of thing. Bought a tub of that, which is uh, engine degreasing. Uh, she says brush it on or leave it to soak, agitate it and then sponge it off with warm water. It's uh, not overly effective. I mean it's a tenner for a tub so it's not a huge amount but I'd expect it to work a bit better than that. I don't know how many times you've got to go through the cycle. It did work very well on that, just cleaning off the paintwork because it's only lightly soiled kind of thing. But anything with a serious amount of grease and oil, I think you need a lot more agitation and a lot bigger tank. Obviously, I've got a tank that will take that. It's nearly 36 inches long. And I've got to do the gearbox, and that's the internal gearbox, which is cleaned better. But yeah. Anyway, onwards and upwards. So this is the third cycle through degreasing. Beginning to look a bit better. Not much more to tell you really. It's a slow, laborious process. Well, we thought we'd have a move on to pastures new and uh, give the gearbox a clear out. I don't know whether you can see, but it's, uh, well, it's got a combination of gear, oil and grease and uh, well, a lot of rubbish. I mean, just for example, that was in the bottom. It's uh, 
yeah. Quarter of an inch deep in uh, swarf and grease. Um, it's a fair size unit though. The drive wheel, pulley. There doesn't look to be anything amiss. <laughs> Famous last words. I know we're going to strip it down, jag everything over, clean it up, and get it back together. Thankfully, no howlers. Um, I've got the secondary shaft and the sliding gears out. I've left this one in because I can't feel any play. I just need to flush the oil lines through. Give the bearings a flush through. I'm waiting for some degreaser to come. I've took the worst of the crap out. The bearings all up. Well, a little scored, but they're not oval. Well, I don't, don't feel like they've done a great deal. Um, yeah, a little bit of wear on the uh, the main driving out output gear, but again, not a lot. So, I've got to clean up the input shaft and whatever that one's called. Well, it's the next morning. The various power outages yesterday. I decided to do some, start some stripping. So clean off the rust on that using a, a rust eater, and then use the degreaser to take the grease off, so I can put the water-based paint stripper on that. Try that today. Uh, two types of rust eater. One's a powder which you mix up. And that's mixed up at 14 to 1. You can go down to 19 to 1. And it's that's the other one, which is the same brand. This this one you can brush on, and it's more of a gel, and it holds on a vertical surface. Um, it's all right. It's probably not really warm enough for it to work fast, but it works. That's the, the tool head, which was red rusty all over. Or brown. It's had uh, God knows how many different applications of it, but I put it on, leave it on for an hour. Whilst it's still wet, give it a good scrub with the brass brush, and that's all that's left. That little bit there. It's good enough for now. It's getting a bit like a science project in here with the. That's the big degreaser. As I said yesterday, I'm not 100% happy with it, but what I've got, that's the yoke, I think they call it. Cleaned it up, so I want to put some paint on it. It's still not, that's still got grease on it, and yet I've done it five or six times now. So, <coughs> probably be getting a bit of paraffin. Or white spirit to clean it down before painting it. And then my uh, good friend Will came in yesterday and sat and nursed me sore and got in four hours that far through. And that's going to be the new shaft. It's a piece of steel. Don't ask me what grade. Well, it's going to be, I think, more suitable than the cast iron um, only concern I have is it's running in a cast iron bearing and before, before it was a cast iron in cast iron so we shall have to have a look and see so that's the paint stripper we're going to try it's water based it doesn't smell doesn't seem to make my fingers tingle when it gets into the cuts and cracks. It's, uh, the recommendations is paint it on liberally, prevent it drying out, so I've wrapped it in cling film, and leave for 30 minutes to 60 minutes. I think we'll make that a couple of hours. Uh, average room temp air temperature in this workshop's about 8 or 9 degrees today. Centigrade. 
So much so that I've put the radiator on. So we'll see what it's like in a few hours. It's currently ten past ten. Started to paint strip the gearbox. Um, admittedly, I degreased it with white spirit. Uh, that took about 15 minutes as opposed to an hour and a half with the other stuff. Uh, I scraped off what was loose, which was quite a bit. And it's been dosed up with the. I don't know, whatever it's called, Bio Strip 20. We'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, I need to see it starting to bubble. Time now, it was 10 past 10 when we put it on. It's now oh, 20 to 12. Not what you'd call rapid, which is what the guy said when I spoke to him. Beats are, mate. Cup of tea time. That's the ball handle assembly for the uh, tool head. Took the nut off it and soaked it in penetrating fluid. That's had overnight in the de-rusting thing, but the chrome's knackered, so what you can see is flaky chrome. So that's probably going to be uh, abraded away and then polished or well probably polished depends how keen I'm feeling whether I'm going to do some uh, anodizing or electroplating later on that's the ball handle assembly for the uh, tool head took the nut off it and soaked it in penetrating fluid that's had overnight in the de-rusting thing, but the chrome's knackered, so what you can see is flaky chrome. So that's probably going to be uh, abraded away and then polished or, well, probably polished. Depends how keen I'm feeling whether I'm going to do some uh, anodizing or electroplating later on. So we're just machining the rough, the rough steel, trying to get it down to round. And even though I've marked the centres bob on, uh, the material seems to be I don't know, cold rolled or whatever, but it's uh, four mil out around, three mil out around. So we're running in back here, 98 RPM. High speed steel bit, and we're taking 20 thou cuts. It will be some time. 